What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you a relatively easy method to be doing hard mode Vorkath. Uh, this method is, you know, mostly revolution, but you are going to still have to be dealing with the mechanics, obviously. So, uh, you know, you still have to be doing some stuff and be paying attention. But as far as hard mode Vorkath is concerned, this method is really, really straightforward. Before I get any further into this video, there is a little disclaimer I want to make here, and I would highly suggest uh, watching this portion of the video, so uh, the video makes more sense, I guess. So the first thing I want to say is, um, I expect you to at least know the Orkath mechanics. Uh, basically, the only mechanics you really have to deal with are going to be the uh, Ice Breath and the Spikes that you have to, like, dodge. Um, Bladed Dive works the best for this, but you can also just surge away from them. But, um, yeah, I would expect you to know the mechanics of this boss fight for this low effort method. The second thing is make sure you're using overload salves. Um, you need the anti-fire protection for this boss, and even that seems to be a little bit iffy. It halves the damage of the magic breath, but um, yeah, if you don't use anti-fire, you're gonna get hit like an 8k magic breath occasionally, and uh, that's, not, that's not something you want. Um, and then the third thing that I want to go over is your performance as a player will greatly affect the uh, outcome of this method. Uh, I've found if you put in a little bit of extra effort, you can get pretty decent kill times as low as like 330. But if you're kind of just like revoing quite a bit and like leeching a little bit more, you're definitely going to be getting somewhere around like 4 minute to like 4 minute 30 second kill times. So um, yeah, your performance as a player is going to greatly affect the results of this method. And um, I guess one little thing at the end here is you're going to have to be eating food quite a bit this boss can like randomly just start hitting super hard so don't be afraid to eat because uh yeah it's definitely better to eat some food than it is to die <laughs> moving on to the preset uh as you can see on screen here uh this is the preset that i used and honestly i wouldn't really use anything other than what you see here because um you know you're really going to be needing best in slot gear for this uh, for the relics though we are using fury of the small and conservation of energy and then we are also using Death Ward. Uh, I find Death Ward is really, really nice for this method because uh, these bosses hit really hard. So having Death Ward can block quite a bit of damage, especially if you get like low HP. Um, it can really help you stay alive. So I would highly suggest having Death Ward on, especially if you're uh, not really going to be paying too much attention. Um, moving on to the familiar, you can see it's a Blood Reaver with scrolls set to a 4 to 5, maybe 6, but I would probably go with a 5 second auto fire rate. Um, if you're having problems, you can put it to 4, but I find 5 is generally enough. Um, and then you can see below the Blood Reaver is the Prism of Restoration. This is going to be absolutely required. You're going to be casting this 2 to 3 times per fight to uh, keep your Blood Reaver alive. And uh, as you can see in the inventory, there's also an extra Blood Reaver uh, pouch. Just in case the Blood Reaver does die, you can resummon it. I would highly suggest doing that. But um, yeah, if you do everything correctly with the Prism, the Blood Reaver should never really die. But um, you are absolutely going to need to bring the uh, Prisms to keep it alive. For the gear setup, you can see it is full tier 90 uh, 5 first Necromancer robes and then the tier 95 weapons. These are pretty much going to be absolutely required. The only thing I would maybe, or you could maybe swap out, would be using two pieces of the Death Warden set, if you're like really struggling, I guess. But um, I find the DPS is probably better than the tanking for this method, so I would just use all five pieces of the first Necromancer, but you could use Death Warden, I guess. Um, obviously, you're going to need a Zuck Cape for this method. Uh, the DPS requirement is insanely high, and you know, you're just going to need that extra damage from the Zuck Cape. And then you can see the highlighted necklace is going to be the Salve Amulet. Uh, I find the Salve Amulet is obviously required. It just does so much damage to Vorkath that you're going to want to be bringing it. But if you look in the inventory, you can see an EOF as well. We will be switching amulets. Um, you don't have to, I guess. But I would highly suggest bringing a uh, Amulet of Souls or something like that, or EOF, just for the uh, Zemorgal portions of the fight if you want to bring the Switch, but I guess you don't technically have to. Um, and then the final things are just going to be the Majorat Aura. I wouldn't really use any other Aura. And then the uh, Book of Jazz. I think the Book of Jazz is easily the best here. 
Moving on to the inventory, it's pretty straightforward. You can see I have two rune pouches. Uh, you could only have one. You could fit all the runes in one pouch, but this is just for the prism. Um, the thing next to the rune pouches is the expensive spices. You get this from, I think, the quest to let them eat pie. And if you have to do this quest, definitely turn the sound on for it because, <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll thank me for that. And um, basically, if you don't know what this item does, it makes food heal you um, 50 more. So the blubber will heal you 800 per bite instead of 750. And this actually makes quite a big difference for this boss from what I've found. So I would highly suggest going and doing that quest and turning the sound on uh, if you're going to be doing this. Uh, the, also, the thing next to it is the Excalibur. The Excalibur is really good for this method because we are going to be starting the fight off with a life transfer. And it basically just allows you to regain all of those life points for free. Um, and then we have Vuln Bombs. Uh, obviously, you're going to be chucking these things every time they wear off on Zermorgrel and Vorkath. So um, definitely bring those and spam them whenever you need them. And then, like I said, there's the extra Blood Reaver pouch. And then an Amulet of Souls or an EOF. Um, if you do bring an EOF, the tier 90 spec is actually pretty solid for this fight. Um, so that's really good if you're going to be using the uh, EOF spec. But you don't actually need an EOF. Uh, you could just be camping the Salve Amulet for the entire fight if you really do want. Um, but then there's just uh, Cerebrews and Blubbers. Uh, one note on the Blubbers is I would highly suggest using these over like Sailfish or something like that because you really do not want to be using Adrenaline when you're fighting these bosses with Necromancy. It's just not worth the Adrenaline loss. And a lot of the times throughout this fight, you're going to be like brew, blubber, brew, blubber, and eating like maybe two to three times in a row, depending on how much you're getting hit. So um, yeah, you really do want to be bringing blubbers. Uh, I find the amount that you see in the uh, preset here is definitely uh, enough for the entire fight. It's like quite a bit. And then the only other things we have are obviously an overload and then a prayer pot. You don't need the blessed flask or anything. You just bring like a, a super restore pot or something. And then the highlighted item in green there, that potion, is the Enhanced Replenishment Potion. I really like these potions a lot more than the uh, Renewal for low effort methods because you have quite a bit of time to drink this potion rather than having to be tick perfect with the Renewal. So um, yeah, I would highly suggest using this Enhanced Replenishment Potion. As for the perks, uh, it's just pretty much standard best in slot PVMing perks. Uh, check the wiki and make sure you go to the advanced section for those. The only one to really note is going to be the uh, maybe like biting with Undead Slayer or at least having Undead Slayer on some piece of gear. Uh, it helps quite a bit for this method and I would highly suggest getting something with that. And then um, one final note is you can actually get a dragon or blue dragon or even undead but I wouldn't suggest undead but you can get a Dragon Slayer task and boost your damage here like really high for free basically. And it gives you quite a bit of kills because if you get like 120 Dragon task, that's 120 Vorkath kills that you could have boosted damage on. And that's like a really easy tip to like boost your damage. Um, I'm not using that in this video, but uh, it's something that you can definitely do to uh, kind of make your damage go crazy. And then the final thing for the preset that I want to note is the Undead Slayer ability or Sigil, whatever you want to call it, is incredibly good for this boss. Um, I would highly suggest getting this if you don't have it. Um, you don't need it, but I found it makes skipping the, um, the second Ice Breath thing almost guaranteed. So it is really, really good to use this with this method, but uh, it's not required by any means. It's additional action bar time. Mm. All right, guys. So for these low effort methods, I like to set up additional action bars. Um, just one little additional action bar with everything you pretty much need to be using throughout the fight. Um, as you can see here, this is the additional action bar that I use. Um, and if you wonder how to set these up, you click on that little gear in the corner and then you go over here to combat and action bar and then action bar. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the display additional action bar option here. And um, the one that I was using was number 13. So if we hide that, you can see it goes away and then we can easily just turn it back on. And that's how you make additional action bars. Uh, I would highly suggest making an additional action bar like this for this method. Um, and as you can see, these are all of the different abilities we are going to be using um, throughout the fight, all of the manual casts that we're pretty much going to be using. 
uh, throughout the fight. So mainly what we're going to be doing here is we use the Conjure Undead Army, Life Transfer, and the Ghost Ability as well as Invoke Death at uh, before we enter the instance. And then when we enter the instance, we will target Vorkath and then we'll use the Vuln Bomb, Prism of Restoration, and then we use the Replenishment Potion when we, uh, when we use Living Death. And then the only other things on this bar are going to be a few different defensives. You're not going to need all of these. The only ones you're really probably going to need are going to be like Freedom and uh, Reflect. But there's going to be more here if you um, you know want to put these here, I guess. And then the last thing for this bar is going to be Brew and uh, Food, Keybound. And basically what you're going to want to do here is Food and then Brew. So QW, as you can see. And I would highly suggest having these on Keybinds. Just so you can very quickly eat throughout the fight um you are going to be eating throughout this fight so having these things uh having easy access to food is really really important and then one other thing i really like to have for this method is having the familiar interface open and mainly that's to be able to see the hp of the blood reaver because um you're really going to be wanting to keep this thing alive with the prism so uh, yeah, you want to be able to see when you need to cast the prism, if it's getting low or anything like that. And um, on screen here, you can see the action bar that I use. Um, it's a pretty standard Revo bar, but uh, yeah, this is the Revo bar that I use and it seems to work pretty well with this method. All right, guys, so you can see I am in the instance here and all we want to do is Pray, uh, Soul Split, and Sorrow, and also make sure you have the ability to switch to Pray Necromancy. You are going to need this after Vorkath lands. Um, so yeah, after Vorkath lands, make sure you're switching to Pray Necromancy. This is very important. So um, yeah, make sure you have access to that. But at the start, we are going to be using Soul Split, and then all we do here is Overload. Um, and now, before we go through the door, we are going to Conjure Undead Army, Life Transfer, use the Ghost ability, and then use Invoke Death, and you can also use the Excalibur here if you want. And then go through the door, click on Vorkath, use your Vuln Bomb and the Ballista. And then we pretty much just sit here until we get Living Death. You can use the Prism of Restoration pretty much whenever you want here. And then as soon as we Living Death here, we will use the Adrenaline Pot, and then we uh, should get the three Death Skulls rotation pretty much every single time with this action bar, which is really nice. So we'll just sit here and revo. If you do need to eat, definitely eat. But um, you shouldn't really need to eat until he does this ice breath mechanic, maybe. So as, as he does the ice breath, just run away, freedom, and then retarget. And as you can see, we are pretty low here, so we're definitely going to eat. We can re-ballista now. Make sure you re-ballista um, right as he does that second mechanic there. But yeah, now you can see Living Death wore off. So we are going to use the tier 95 spec. And then, uh, yeah, just pretty much just optimally use your basic attacks here. And, um, yeah, you can also uh, manually cast Finger of Death here. But as you can see, we can revo through quite a bit of this. We just have to manually click the uh, Finger of Death and the basic attack occasionally. And it's very straightforward. So, yeah, as you can see, if you do this correctly, you will skip the second Icy Breath mechanic type thing. And then, um, yeah, so as Vorkath turns back to you here, he will do two attacks, and then we switch over to Zamorgrel. So we switch to Zamorgrel. You can put on your Amulet of Souls if you want and Vuln Bomb him. You don't have to do this, I guess. And then make sure you're shooting the, the Ballista here to get Vorkath to come back down. Otherwise, uh, you'll get insta-killed. So yeah, make sure you're doing that. So as Vorkath lands, he will do another uh, spike thing on the ground. So switch back to your... Um, Switch back to your self amulet and then surge away from this uh, spikes. But yeah, as you can see, we pretty much just stand uh, here. Switch to Prey Necromancy now. Um, you can re-Vuln Bomb him. And now that Vorkath has landed, we can just spam the Ballista on cooldown. This will kill all of the shielders, so you don't actually have to target them or anything. But uh, as you can see, we are just um, eating if we need to. And then surge away from those spikes. And you can see I forgot to hit the, uh, what's it called, the um, prism. So I'm just going to re-summon my 
familiar here. And then I'm just going to reflect because I'm getting kind of hit hard. So you can see I'm actually eating quite a bit because I am getting hit very hard. And this is where those defensives come in handy. So we're just going like, to continue to use defensives here because we are really getting hit. This is crazy. Yeah, as you can see, this boss does hit quite hard and um, there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's just a poorly designed boss in my opinion. But as you can see, we want to be standing maximum distance like that. And then prism, we can surge this. Hopefully we can get this insta kill. And now we are going to try to find Zamorgirl here. He's right there. Now we can tier 95 spec. You can switch to your Amulet of Souls for this guy and bomb bomb him. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but I would highly suggest it. And then just surge from these things or Bladed Dive. Bladed Dive works better because he won't like surge into the slime like I just did there. But as you can see, if you move away from it quickly, it won't actually do any damage to you, which is really nice. Yeah, this is not the greatest kill and um, still going all right. I wish I could see my kill timer, but they coded that incorrectly as well, just like everything else with this boss. So, you know. <laughs> Bladed Dive does work a lot better at dealing with the um, uh, that little like spike thing. So you don't like surge into these slimes, but you can pretty much move from them pretty quickly. And you can see there, I got a 417. Um, it's a decent kill time. You can see that kill definitely took quite a bit of food, uh, as you can see here. But um, yeah, that I did get hit pretty hard. And you could definitely be using more defensives and stuff like that. I was kind of just talking through it, you know what I mean? But um, yeah. All right, guys. So you can see I'm here on my main account, and I'm going to be showing a slightly faster method that's a little bit more effort. So all we're going to do here is come over here to the dummies, use Threads of Fate, and then soul sap and then that's it then we can go over here to the crystal we don't have to do any more building or anything crazy but we just want to get these three stacks so we could get a full volley and the reason we want a full volley is because we have the undead slayer sigil on this account so it can give massive damage and it'll skip that second um thing every time so once we lose combat here we uh do the same thing life transfer invoke go through the door and then target or So right as we use um, Living Death, we are going to want to use the Undead Slayer Sigil. So Living Death, one ability, Undead Slayer Sigil, manually cast Death Skulls. Um, Undead Slayer actually stalls you, so you do want to be, you know, manually casting it. But as you can see, we got that Death Skulls and a five stack volley with the Undead Slayer Sigil, and that will give us a massive amount of damage. So same thing here, we just dodge this mechanic. But yeah, you can use another Vuln Bomb on him, but as soon as he turns to you, you're going to want to put on your EOF and use Split Soul, and then turn onto Zimorgirl. And then you're going to want to get a 5-stack Volley on him. Keep eating up if you need to. Maybe use a Finger of Death or something. And this will give you quite a bit of damage on Zimorgirl. And then we just switch back onto Orkath once we're done with that. So this will kill him. Now we're going to switch over to Zamorgul here. And after he uses these three stacks you can see above his head, we are going to activate Split Soul. So he's going to do that like right now, hopefully. No, there we go. So now we put on Split Soul and we just DPS through him. Probably could have used our tier 95 spec a little better, but you know. It is what it is. You can use bloat with split soul. I would highly suggest it. I always forget, but bloat is really bad on Revo. It's not a very well made ability. So now that he's low, you can use invoke death and just insta kill him if you want. I was a little late on it, but as you can see, 
that was a 332 a pretty quick kill and then you can snag this loot before this idiot runs away with it so um yeah 332 a pretty decent method i think um you need to have the undead slayer sigil for this but everything else is you know pretty much the same we're just basically activating split soul um but yeah this is a much faster method so i would highly suggest doing this method if you have the sigil and you have uh and you want to be getting like your 100 kills or something or farming for whatever reason this just makes your life a lot easier and it's way faster thanks for watching guys if you made it this far in the video definitely drop a like on it hopefully you guys use this method to get your 100 kill count and then honestly you probably shouldn't ever go back to vorkath i think it's a very bad update in general but i think it's a really really annoying boss to fight so uh yeah hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for some of you guys and uh yeah thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next one